Hello, welcome back to the channel. Here is another car video without a car in it, but I have some news and I thought I should share with you guys because I get so many messages from people asking me about what I'm doing with the cars and what's happening and I'm one of those suckers who can't make up his mind basically and it's that time of the year. I've had the cars for a year and a half. I thought I would keep them for a long time and that story goes over and over every year. And I thought the RS4 would be the car that would become a family car and it would last for a long, long time. It's a four wheel drive with winter wheels and tires and summer wheels and tires. So it's an all rounder, it's spacious, it's fully loaded. I have everything that I want in the car. I was very happy with it and uh, then for the fun part I had the Ferrari or still have the Ferrari. So those of you who follow my channel know that I'm a Porsche guy through and through. I've had 16 Porsches in my life and then a couple of years ago I fell out with Porsche dealers, not Porsche the brand but uh, I decided that I should branch out so I bought an Aston Martin. And it was really nice, I loved it, and I stupidly sold it, and then bought the Ferrari. Unfortunately, the Ferrari doesn't give me the joy that the Porsche does, or the Aston did. The Aston was an amazing car to drive, I loved it so much, it was just a very big beast. And driving it around in London traffic wasn't that fun. Um, the Ferrari, on the other hand, especially the California T, it's very small, very nimble. Um, it's a V8, sounds good, drives really well, powerful, 550 brake horsepower, sufficient for a small car. I can't fault it, I mean, it's a great car, but it doesn't give you the same feeling that you get when you're driving a Porsche. For some reason, the way Porsches are designed, they make you feel like they're an extension of you. So the car obeys and listens to you and the way it behaves. And unless you drive the two cars, it's impossible to convey this over video or through words, that amazing feeling of feeling connected with the engine and the mechanics of the car. So recently I was in the Netherlands and I test drove this um, Taycan just by chance. Uh, my nephew suggested that we should um, try it because I always said I don't like it and I don't like electric cars and he said well this is a specific one that you will absolutely love and I thought okay I'll give it a chance and then when I drove it it was amazing I was blown away Porsche always do a great job at whatever they make um, the car was very heavy you could feel the weight of the car because of the batteries and everything but it was really planted and I drove it and I had so much fun I'll put a link up here, so if you're interested you can watch that video of mine. I was completely blown away by that car. I actually did consider buying one, but then when I looked at the mileage of what it does in a charge and uh, with the charging stations around Europe, and I do a lot of motorway miles around Europe, I just went to Sweden and back, um, that's 4,000 kilometers in a trip. So. Uh, for me, I need a car that I can rely on and I'm not stranded in the middle of nowhere on a motorway with a flat battery. Plus, if um, I want to buy a toy, a technology toy, I think £100,000 is a bit too much for it. Even though it's got the Porsche badge on it, there is nothing. It's like buying a Rolex or an Apple Watch. An Apple Watch is a gadget, it's a toy. A year later you discard it, it becomes slow and sluggish and some new technology comes and you throw it away or you sell it and then you buy another one. You buy a Rolex and it stays with you for life. So I think the combustion engine cars are the ones that you keep for... I think the combustion engine... I think the combustion engine cars, I've said this like so many times and I keep tripping so I have to go and re-record this, but the combustion engine cars stay with you. Um, for a lifetime, whereas electric cars will die. Um, the other thing that I know many people, this is a controversial subject, 
will agree or disagree with me, but electric cars are not there to reduce the carbon footprint. They don't do anything. It's just political bullshit that has been created by uh, lobbyists, politicians who want to get votes. They have run out of other agendas, so now they are pushing this pollution agenda as much as they can. Um, there's a there's a research body that evaluates different items and it is an independent body with no connection to governments or uh, companies. They investigated and they took an electric car and calculated the full life cycle from the time it was produced in the factory, how all the parts were sourced, uh, then it was used on the road for 15 years and then it was disposed of and then they took a diesel car from the time it was built driven on the road and disposed of 15 years of both they compared the two cars the diesel car had a much smaller carbon footprint and it was more efficient and better for the environment the electric car was bad so People who believe that electric cars are the future and they're going to save the planet are wrong, I'm afraid. You'll just have to make your own video to disagree with me on this because electricity currently being produced, the only place on this planet that has decent electricity produced through a natural way is Norway and it's not by design, it's by nature because they have so many waterfalls so they have hydroelectricity. The rest of us are producing electricity through oil, gas, um, some of us are producing it through coal and then there is nuclear power and nuclear power is not clean energy because there's a lot of byproducts that are produced, the nuclear waste that's produced it's then buried into bunkers so if there's a big earthquake or some kind of eruption and one of those bunkers leaks we're going to have an absolute nightmare it's the same thing. I mean, this whole pollution subject is just pointless. And every time I start talking about it, it boils my blood. We move from paper bags to plastic bags because people were killing trees. And then plastic became the big enemy. And now we're buying paper bags and paper straws. We're killing trees again. So it's like we have to change the way we behave, the way we live our lives instead of um, blaming things. So if everyone was forced to take a cup of coffee to the coffee shop if you don't have a cup you don't get a coffee then everyone would have a cup of coffee in, in their hand so i think uh, it's us who can change it not by doing things i mean plastic bags is just like something else that i get very annoyed about you go to the supermarket and everything on the shelves is in a plastic bag the bread the fruit the vegetables the eggs the anything that you can think of look around everything is in a plastic bag of some kind you get to the till you have to pay for a plastic bag because it's bad for the environment it's just insane and people are just sheep they just follow whatever the governments tell them and it's just very sad anyway i'm digressing massively i, sh I think i should make another video about my pollution anger <laughs> the lava that's spewing up um, so yeah, I've decided now that I should have one car instead of having two cars because I have two cars that do half of what I want in one car. So between the two of them, I have one complete car. One is a convertible, one is a sporty car, the other one is a four-wheel drive and it's you can take it to the Alps, you can take it on to long trips, it's practical and all that. So I've been looking at something that I could combine the two cars and have one car because when I take the Audi out um, on a road trip or somewhere then I think oh I missed the Ferrari I wish I had that so I could open the top and then at other times I take the Ferrari somewhere and I think oh damn it I wish I had um, a four-wheel drive car or something like that and then I think I missed the Audi. So after doing some research and looking at the Taycan test driving went and looked at some Maserati uh, convertibles and other cars guess what once a Porsche guy always a Porsche guy I have ended up coming back to the Porsche brand so I have decided that I'm going to get a C4S so 911 Carrera 4S convertible it's a four-wheel drive it's convertible and 
it's practical enough for one person, a single man driving around with his dog and some clothes, sufficient. I don't have kids, I don't have a wife, so it doesn't really matter. I don't need a bigger car. But that could be the one car I could buy a set of winter wheels and tires for it like I have for the Audi. And then I can take it to the Alps in winter if I want. Um, but it's, it's, it's a all-in-one car. You can drive it every day, you can put thousands of miles on it without worrying, like the Ferrari, I've done 7,000 miles on it. And it feels like a lot because people don't drive the Ferraris, they only have like a thousand miles a year or something stupid, but what's the point of having a car if you're not going to drive it? So with the Porsche I can just enjoy it and plus I went for a test drive last Saturday and I was just completely blown away. It was a Carrera 4, it wasn't even an S and the way it handled, the way it responded, I thought it was going to be very sluggish because it was 385 brake horsepower. My Ferrari is 550 and even the Audi is 450 so that was like 385 I was expecting it to be really like a dog but the car was amazing and uh, so if I get an S which is 450 brake, brake horsepower I won't have a problem I will really enjoy it so that's the plan however there's a fly in the ointment I have to get rid of the cars before I buy another one because money don't have it so I have advertised my Ferrari first and I'm hoping to sell it. I've put it up at a very low price. Uh, I paid a lot of money for it and I'm still losing a lot of money but I thought if I put it at a reasonable price to make a smaller loss I will probably not sell it for a while and I'll be sitting on it. Um, so it is fully loaded carbon fiber blah 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 extras. I'll put a link below actually uh, in the description of this so if you know anyone who's interested in buying it um, then please pass this on to them. It's a wonderful car, it still has Ferrari warranty and it has um, I don't know three or four sur free services remaining. Um, amazing car, beautiful color combination, fully loaded. I think the original list price was close to 190,000 pounds so it has a lot of stuff in it um, yeah and if there is someone out there who's interested in getting a California T as a Carrera 4S 992 wants to swap also send me a message maybe we can do that because uh, uh, there could be a deal so yeah what else shall I tell you? Yeah, once I sell the Ferrari and buy the Porsche, then I will sell the Audi as well. Actually, my sister said she might buy it, so if she does, then it will stay in the family, and I'll still get to drive it from time to time, but otherwise, I'm gonna advertise it soon as well. So that's all to report on the car front. I will post some more videos. I have a lot of footage that I did from the south of France and then from my trip to Sweden. Uh, I've just been busy with other things and also a bit lazy so I haven't really posted much but I will edit it and then post it so you will have some more videos. Thanks for watching once again as usual and hopefully more Porsche footage to come in future. Um, I get so many messages from people asking me why I don't have Porsches anymore and that they came to my channel for Porsche content and now they're still here but they like the Porsches so this is this is an opportunity for you to help me get a Porsche <laughs> anyway thanks bye